back in videos nine and 10, we looked at how we can size grid items by spanning them. And we looked at how we can put them where we want them to go by using uh, the track numbers where they start and stop or just specifying where they stop or if they would just span across the entire grid. Now, there's a couple other ways we can also both size and place our items, and that is using something called grid template areas, and that's giving specific names to areas on your grid. So first thing we want to do is actually make some uh, areas in our grid. So I'm going to make a quick grid. I kind of want to make your standard uh, website with a sidebar on the left and a sidebar on the right and some content in the middle and then a footer across the bottom. So uh, that's going to be a sort of a three column grid. So say grid template column. And I'm going to say 1FR, 500px, 1FR. And what that should do is it'll give us this 500 pixel middle and then whatever's left on the left and the right will be taken up uh, accordingly by these sidebars. Um, and then let's flip on our, our uh, dev tools here. I also want to uh, specify a couple uh, rows. So I'm going to say grid template rows. And we'll have, let's say 150 px, 150 px, and 100 px. Good. So we've got a grid, sort of three by three here. Now what I want to do is actually name the areas. I want this, these two squares right here, I want that to be sidebar one. Uh, these two squares I want to be sidebar two. This whole center column I want to be called content. And then the, the strip along the bottom, I want that to be called the footer. So the way that we do that is um, it's actually kind of uh, it's kind of funny. It's it's very explicit. You simply just uh, sort of like type it as if it were ASCII. So say grid template areas. And then for each row, you give yourselves a set of quotes and then you just type the name of the area that you wish for it to be. So I'm going to say side bar one content sidebar two. And then if I give that a save, you'll see now and make sure that you have your dev tools on and this uh, this one right here, display area names. You see that it starts to overlay it with the name of this area is called sidebar one, the name of this area is sidebar two, and this area is content. Good. But I also want these areas as well. So uh, what you can do, and this is a bit funky syntax as well, is you do not um, put a comma or, or anything like that. You simply just uh, put another set of quotes. And this can all be done on one line. In fact, some editors concatenate them like that. But I like to put each one on its own line. And that will just kind of give me a visual of, of what we're working with. So if I give that a save now, you'll see sidebar one, sidebar one, sidebar two, sidebar two, and uh, content, content. Good. And then the last row, I want to just be footer, footer, footer. And that will line up the footer all across the end. If you ever have, you want like a dead space, like maybe you didn't want this to be anything, you can just put a dot there and that will just uh, leave it to be just a regular old spot that you could use um, with, with the other methods that we've had. But in our case, I want it to be footer, footer, footer. So it's kind of like you can just like look at this and uh, you could see that you can visualize what it will look like. And some people also use tabs so that it'll all nicely line itself up that is totally doable as well, just so you can sort of visualize what's going on here. Good. Now, when I want to place my items in these areas, I don't have to worry about line numbers or anything like that. I can just go ahead and grab on to, let's, let's do the footer first. And you say grid area footer. And then it will just both size it and place it where we want it to go. We don't have to say how big it is. We don't have to say where it's going to go. We simply just say that it is the footer and then it will go there. Um, it'll span it across the entire region. So let's do the rest now. So uh, item one was grid area. Whoa, grid area. That was sidebar one. Good. And then side, item two was content. And item three was sidebar two. Beautiful. Now it's all perfectly lining up uh, where we want it to go. And now the cool thing about that is we could start to involve some media queries that would simply just switch up what this would look like. So if I were to make a media query, I can simply just redefine the, the template areas 
as we need them. So I'll select my container at once we hit 700 pixels and I'm just going to say background red, make sure this media query is actually working. Let's hit 700 pixels. There we go. It's kicking in. Good. I'm happy with that. Um, and I can just redefine what my template areas are. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to redefine it to be uh, content, 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 sidebar one, sidebar one, sidebar two, footer, footer, footer. And now as I get it smaller, you'll see that the layout totally jumps and it will then put the content up top. And uh, I'm not uh, totally doing this justice because I've, I've used pixels here, but if I was to use all FR units, maybe like 10 FR and then the rows would each be the rows doesn't matter. Actually, there we go. As it gets smaller, the content will jump up top and the sidebar values go right down below it. And then the footer is still exactly where I want it. So sometimes the only thing you need to do in your media queries is simply just redefine what the layout looks like and everything will sort of snap to. And in this case, I could also uh, redefine more columns where if you wanted sidebar one and sidebar two to both have four, I could uh, use these values up here to define uh, even more. So that is grid template areas. It's pretty neat. Um, not everybody loves the the idea behind um, making ASCII, but it sure is a lot nicer than having to remember exactly what the columns are, because if you were to ever change the number of columns, it doesn't really matter in this case. So we're in, we're in really good shape. Uh, other than that, we've got some other ways to, to place and size our stuff, and we'll get into that into the next video. All right, let's switch over to uh, another example, and that is uh, understanding that when you create grid areas, you also get um, line names for free, which is pretty neat. So open up area line name start, and I've just got a whole bunch of numbers here. And what I want to do is actually make a grid without defining any columns or rows. We're simply just going to make the grid with the grid We're simply just going to make the grid with the grid area. So we'll say grid template area. And I'm going to go on the new line. And in this case, I'm going to use an emoji poop. Whoa. Two, three, four. I'm going to do, yeah, I'll do four poops and four hamburgers. Two, three, four hamburgers. And then I'll just duplicate that over uh, four times. Good. Give that a save. And I spelled template wrong. And something's wrong. Grid template areas with an S on the end. Good. So um, if I turn on my dev tools now, you'll see that we have emojis overlapping where all of the actual areas go. It's just pretty neat. Um, and if you wanted to, you could do something like item four, three, you can say grid area poop, and that will just cover the entire uh, poop area. Actually, what is interesting about this is uh, you tell me, tell me what is happening here where we just made uh, eight across and four down. And we have not enough room because we've got more items than we have space for. So what is happening here, if I turn on the black lines, is that uh, we have sort of this ex explicit grid area for poop and explicit grid area for hamburgers. And then as we are out of space, uh, what happens? Well, it automatically creates additional rows, uh, which are implicit, right? I know I've, I've gone over that over and over, but it's really important that we, we understand that. However, I do not want to show you how you can just place it in the poop area. We want to show you how you can actually get these uh, named lines rather than just the numbered lines. So previously we had did some, done something like this, like grid, column, and we did so like start at two and go to until line five. And that would uh, span this item here. Well, what's neat about that is we can actually use uh, line names like poop dash start. And we want to end it where poop end. 
and give that a save. So what's happening here is every time you have a grid area named anything, and before it might be content or sidebar one, but in our case, it's poop and emoji poop. And then we can tack on a dash start or a dash end. And these are lines. And unfortunately, the dev tools doesn't show us the names of these lines, but they're sort of lines that come for free in the browser by tacking on a dash start and a dash end into the grid area. So in here, what I've done is I've said start where the poop starts and end where the poop ends, right? I could also uh, do something like this where hamburger end give that a save and you could see it starts where the poop area starts and ends where the poop area ends and similarly if i went to the grid row um i could just say grid row end if i only want to end where the poop ends then it's going to move it down why because it is going to anchor it at the bottom of our poop area and of course it will spill into the hamburger area because uh, of how wide the actual columns have gone. So you don't always have to use line numbers. You can also use areas that you have uh, created in your grid template areas by um, using the sort of implicit lines that come along for free by using dash start and dash end tacked onto whatever you named your grid template area.